In this lesson, we'll discuss how to use the software that is supplied with your FC4500 series cutter. In a previous lesson, Basic Setup, we covered step-by-step -step instructions for installing both Cutting Master 3 and the D-Cut Master applications. So in this lesson, it is assumed that you have already installed these applications. If you'd like to install these applications on your computer, review that lesson. We'll cover how to use Cutting Master 3. We'll show how to control the cutting conditions on the FC4500 from the Cutting Master 3 program. How to assign conditions or media presets to line objects within Cutting Master 3. How to create media presets as well as assigning them to objects within your design. Finally, we'll cover how to use D-Cut Master. Let's start with Cutting Master 3. Cutting Master 3 is a plug-in software module that works with Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. In other words, it connects your design software to the FC4500. We'll cover how to use your layers effectively in both Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw, as well as how to get the most out of Cutting Master 3. Keep in mind that while Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw will be referred to throughout this lesson, we only cover mainly how to use Cutting Master 3. Let's get familiar with the components of Cutting Master 3 application. Once open, it will place the design in this workspace. At the top are pull-down menus that have all the options available to Cutting Master 3, similar to other Windows or Mac applications you have used. Just below that are navigational tools. First is the Undo and Redo button. Just right of that are the Zoom tools. On the top right hand side are the cut option buttons. When one of these buttons is clicked, it will open or reveal their options in the cut option side panel below. To the left of the side panel is the preview window. The preview window is where the media size, represented by the white space in the middle, and the job can be viewed. The preview area will help you visualize how the job will lay out on the media that is loaded on the cutter or the media that is intended to be used. The preview window consists of the media area, the rulers, and the job tabs. Any changes made in the cut job option side panel is reflected in the preview window, including the media size and the job. At the bottom left of the preview window are tabs representing different jobs sent from Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. For instance, if several different jobs or different copies of the same job are sent over to Cutting Master 3, they will be represented by the tabs at the bottom. Lastly, at the bottom right of the window, just below the side panel, is the Send button. Clicking this button will send the job to the cutter. If more than one cutter is connected, a list of those models will display, allowing you to choose the cutter you'd like to send the job design to. Taking a closer look at the preview window, this white space in the middle can represent the media you plan to use or the media currently loaded into the cutter. This is helpful since the job is shown at a size relative to how it will fit on the media. At the top and right side of the preview window are rulers that help position the design. At the lower right corner are these two arrows. These represent the origin points of the media page. The red arrow is the X direction, and the blue arrow is the Y direction. Let's examine the different buttons and their functions. Undo will undo the last action. Redo will restore the last undo action. Each of these actions has a shortcut key assigned to them on your keyboard. To undo an action, continue to hold the control key on the PC or the command key on the Mac, and press the Z key. To redo an action using your keyboard, hold the control and the shift key on the PC, or the command key and the shift key on the Mac, and press the Z key. The zoom tools help with navigating around the preview window. The pan tool will pan the job. It works by clicking on the tool. In the preview window, click, hold, and drag the area. 
it will move the preview window to a different section. The Zoom In tool will zoom into the center of the preview window. The Zoom Out tool will zoom out of the preview window. The Zoom In Selection tool allows a rectangle to be drawn to the area you'd like to zoom into. This works by clicking and dragging the mouse to draw a rectangle of the area you would like to zoom into. Then release the mouse button and the software will zoom into that area. The Zoom Slider tool enables you to use mouse movement to zoom in and out of the design. This tool works by clicking the mouse button and then moving the mouse up or down to zoom in or out. Move the mouse up and the software will zoom out. Move the mouse down and it will zoom in. The Fit All button will fit the media page within the preview window. The Fit Width button will zoom to the width of the media page, fitting it within the preview window. The Cut Options buttons are located in the upper right corner of the Cutting Master 3 window. They represent the different options and settings that are available for cutting the job. Clicking on one of these buttons will display their settings in the side panel just below the buttons. Each set of options can also be accessed through the Tools pull-down menu as well. These options will be discussed more in detail later on in this lesson. The first button, Page Options panel, will have settings for adjusting both the size of the media, represented by the white space, and the job. The Weed Border Options panel has settings for adjusting the weed borders. The Tiling Options panel has settings for setting up tiling. The Copies panel has options for making multiple copies of the job. The Cut Job Options panel has settings for choosing different actions you would like the cutter to perform, such as tiling, sorting, and other advanced settings. The Cutter panel will display connected cutters and their status. The first option is the Media Page Options button, which has settings that pertain to the media page size and the job. Here, the media page size can be adjusted to either a custom size or a preset size. One of the preset sizes includes the exact cut area that is obtained from the cutter while sinking. In most cases, this will be the total cutting area of the FC4510-60, unless the origin or start point has been relocated. The size values can be adjusted by using the width, represented by the W, and height, represented by the H settings. The sliders are for sizing the media visually, whereas size values next to the sliders are for more accurate sizing. Once the width and height have been set, the media page in the preview window will adjust accordingly. Take note that when the media page size is adjusted, it will appear to resize the job. However, it is not resizing the job. It is just maintaining the perspective of the job size in relation to the media. In other words, the job size will not be affected when the media page is adjusted. This helps you visualize how the design will fit on the media. Just below the sliders are the preset media page sizes. These are the commonly used or standard sizes that were installed with the software. They are categorized according to those standards, such as ANSI. To choose a preset, just click on it. This will automatically adjust the media page in the preview window. At the top of the list are the pulled sizes. These sizes are obtained from the cutter or cutters during the sinking process. It's during this process that the cutter will obtain the current cut area of the connected online cutters. While the pulled sizes obtained from the cutter can be selected, keep in mind that these values generally reflect the total cut area of the table. In other words, if the loaded media were smaller than the cut area table size, the pulled media sizes will be larger. For instance, if a 10 by 10 media is loaded, the pull size may not reflect this and return a value to maximum size of the table's cut area. Therefore, we recommend that in order to have the media size in the preview window reflect the media size you plan to cut, enter the size of the media in the height and width boxes. 
Note that any time the height or width of the media page is adjusted, the preset will display custom. Because of this, Cutting Master 3 allows us to add our own customized presets of typical sizes we plan to cut. For instance, let's imagine that you have a particular media size, perhaps a sheet that is 24 inches by 24 inches, that is used all the time, and you would like to see how a certain design will fit, or perhaps how many copies you can get on that media. Instead of setting the height and width each time, we can create a custom preset. To do this, click on the pull-down list and right-click on the list. A context menu will appear. We want the first choice, Add Media Size. This will allow us to label the size, which we will call 24 by 24. Next, we'll set the width and height to 24 for width and 24 for height. To accept, we can just click down below. Now we can click on the pull-down list and scroll down to our new media size, which is in a category labeled Untitled. The category can be renamed by hovering the mouse over the category name and then selecting Rename on this contextual menu. Let's name it My Media and press Enter. These categories make it convenient for organizing the media sizes. Just below the media size are the settings for the job size. These allow for the job design to be resized to best fit within the media page limits. Below the job size is where the origin of the job design will be placed. This is where the position presets can be chosen or actual coordinates can be entered. The last two settings will rotate the job to one of the four axis angles of 0, 90, 180, and 270. Mirroring will flip the design horizontally or vertically. The next cutting option button opens the weed border options in the side panel. In this panel, the settings for both the weed border and weed lines can be configured. The first section is where the weed border can be enabled and the size of the weed border can be set. The second section is where weed lines can be included. Weed borders and weed lines become a part of the job until they are disabled. This means that even if the job design is moved, the weed border will move with it. The show weed border checkbox will either display the weed border or turn off the weed border. Padding is the distance between the job and the weed border. Horizontal will add horizontal weed lines between lines of text or objects. Vertical will add vertical weed lines between characters or objects. H slash V stands for horizontal and vertical lines. Recursive will add horizontal weed lines with vertical lines between each character or object. When vertical lines are added, they only extend between the horizontal lines, whereas the horizontal lines extend across the outside weed border. The third cutting option button will display the tiling options in the side panel. Tiling is an operation that is necessary if you plan to cut a job that is larger than the cutter you are using. Each tile will be cut separately as an individual job. The options in the side panel allow you to configure the tile pattern. Here the job design shows a large job with a tile pattern applied to it within Cutting Master 3. The end result will be two tiles cut separately. Notice that we now have a box with a blue overlay and with a single line in the middle. The single line is where the job design will be split for tiling. There is also a number to identify each tile. The edge of the tile pattern shows the dimensions of the tiles. Let's quickly switch back to the page option settings. Notice that the job design shows how it will be tiled when it is cut. Let's switch back again to the tile option settings. 
Notice that there are four grab handles on each corner of the tile pattern. This allows for the tiling pattern to be adjusted visually. The red grab handles are used to adjust the tiles within the pattern. For instance, we can adjust the tile so that the tile doesn't split the middle of a letter or an object. Tile lines can also be added to the tile pattern. Sometimes this is needed for a job design that requires smaller tiles for better handling when mounting the graphic onto the substrate. To add tile lines, hover the mouse point over a tile line or tile border. Click and drag the mouse and a new line starts to form. This line can be dragged to a tile line in the middle or it can be dragged to the outside tile border or any tile line in between. The side panel provides different settings to adjust the tiling numerically. The top setting will move the position of the tile pattern and adjust the size. The next section, Configure a Regular Grid, has settings to determine how the pattern will be set. Automatic has Cutting Master 3 set the tile placement automatically. Custom allows the tiles to be customized. In this case, the tiles are set according to our choice. Regular Grid will set the tiles evenly across the tile pattern according to the size of the tile. When enabled, relative values will appear below for setting the cell's width, height, number of columns, and the number of rows. The bottom four settings determine how the overlaps will be configured. By overlapping the tiles onto the adjoining tiles, you can eliminate any gaps between the tiles when assembling the panels after they have been cut. You'll know that an overlap is applied when you see these transparent red bars that overlay the tile lines in the preview window. The symmetrical checkbox at the bottom of the overlap section will keep the values symmetrical. The top and bottom overlaps are kept the same size, as well as the left and right overlaps. For instance, if the bottom overlap value is changed to 1 inch, the top value will be set to 1 inch. The same would be true for the left and right overlaps. As one is changed, so does the other. The Show Dimension checkbox, when checked, will show or remove the dimensions along the edge of each panel. To make copies of the job design, click on the Matrix Copies button. The side panel will display the options for making copies in a matrix format. Rows sets the number of rows in the matrix. As the rows value is increased, the copies are added in an upward direction. Columns sets the number of columns in the matrix. As the columns value is increased, the copies are made in a horizontal direction. Limit to media will limit the number of copies to the media page area and prevent copies from being made beyond the media width or height. Spacing sets the distance between each copy. Horizontal is the distance or spacing between each copy horizontally, and vertical is the distance or spacing between each copy vertically. The Configure a Cut Job panel has six useful configuration settings in one panel. The configuration headings are Apply Conditions, Configure Tiling, Sorting, Advanced, and Copies. To access a configuration setting, click on the heading. This will reveal the settings for that configuration heading. In this section, Apply Condition, you can determine what you'd like to cut and how it will be cut. These three choices determine what is to be cut. All will cut all the graphic lines in the job. By color will allow you to determine which colors of a job design are to be cut. For instance, here we have a job design that has two colors, red and blue. We can have only the red objects cut, the blue objects cut, or have both colors cut. 
This is handy when using different color vinyls to produce a job design. By layer will allow you to determine which layers are to be cut in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. Once again, which layer will be cut is determined by the check mark next to the layer. You'll notice that whatever choice is made, it will allow conditions or media types to be used when cutting the different elements. For instance, if we chose to cut all, we can then assign a condition or media type by clicking here. This list will show the eight conditions. In other words, if we assign condition two, the software would signal the cutter to switch to condition two prior to cutting. When cutting different colors, in all likelihood, you would want to pause the cutter prior to cutting the next layer or color. To place a pause between the layers or colors, right click in this area here, and this menu pops up where add pause can be selected. Once selected, it will show this little pause on that layer showing that the system will pause the operation prior to cutting the next layer or color. Media types can also be assigned to the cutting operation. Once a media type is assigned to the cutting, then the software, prior to cutting the design, will switch to an auxiliary condition and change the settings to what are set in the media type. This can be a powerful function when working with colors or layers. For instance, when cutting by colors, a condition or media type can be assigned to the different colors. This may be helpful when having two different types of material that need alternate settings. The same is true with layers. Each layer can be set with a different condition or media type. Some have used this feature for the print and cut process by having one cut line for cutting through the first layer and assigning the second layer to a condition for cutting somewhat further into the liner sheet for pop-out decals. The next section, Configure Tiling, is where you can disable tiling by using this check mark. As mentioned earlier, this can be helpful when you need to see the total design rather than viewing it in a tiled format. It is also in Configure Tiling that you can determine whether all the tiles are to be cut or just one tile. Recall earlier that we disabled all the tiles except tile number one. Let's do that now so we can see what happens. Let's return to Configure Cut Job. Notice how under Select Tiles Only that it has defaulted to tile one. This can be changed if you decide that you also need tile number two. The separation value determines the distance between tiles when they are cut. Sorting objects within a job is not only efficient, but will reduce possible media skewing. It does this by organizing the objects so that they will cut in order of their position. This reduces movement of the media making the cutting more efficient as well. In the sorting section, you can have Cutting Master 3 sort the job design rather than use the sort function on the cutter. The benefit to this is that the cutter won't hesitate trying to sort the data prior to cutting. The sort settings are grouped into two segments, layer sorting and cut line sorting. Under layer sorting, when group layers by condition is selected, it will organize the job so that the objects are sorted by the condition they are assigned to. For instance, if two layers or colors are assigned to a certain condition, those objects will be cut in succession of each other. This operation prevents the cutter from switching between conditions needlessly. Under cut line sorting, when maximize speed is selected, the objects are sorted so that the next object to be cut will be the object closest to the current blade position. Use this setting when you need to maximize the cutting speed. Minimize roller movement is mostly used for roll feed cutters and not necessarily for a flatbed. The objects are sorted in a way so that they are cut in order of how they are laid out in the job. Yeah. Sort interior contours first will somewhat override the above settings and that it will always cut the inner objects first before cutting the outline of the object. The advanced section has settings to determine what action to take after a layer, tile, or job is completed. 
In the After Cutting a Layer settings, Continue Immediately will continue to send the job to the cutter without pausing, regardless of whether the cutter is still busy cutting. Await Cutter Ready will delay sending the job to the cutter until the cutter is ready to accept it. It will resume sending the job once the cutter is back to ready mode. In the After Cutting a Tile settings, the same options appear along with the added option to pause. When selecting pause, a message will appear that allows you to decide when to resume cutting. In After Cutting a Job, Return to Origin on the other hand will return the cutter back to its origin point. This setting is usually best used when cutting sheet media. Send Cut Job Uninterrupted will send all the data to the cutter at once without pausing or stopping. Auto Weld will weld any overlapping shapes in the design. This saves the step of going back to Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw and welding them there. Convert Strokes to Outlines will have the cutter cut around the edge of the paths or strokes thickness rather than cutting along the center of the paths. The last section, Copies, sets the number of copies to be cut in the job design. The Cutter Options button will show both the status and settings for the connected cutter. If there is more than one cutter connected to your computer at the same time, Cutting Master 3 will recognize them and display the status and settings for them as well. This is a good indication that a GraphTech cutter is connected and communicating with the computer. In fact, if a cutter is not showing in this panel or shows it is not connected, this denotes that the cutter is either not connected or is not turned on. Each connected cutter will have a picture of the connected cutter, the model name, the status of the cutter, along with several groups of settings. The status is displayed just below the model name. The more common status modes are Syncing, which indicates Cutting Master 3 is gathering information from the cutter. Pause indicates the cutter is in pause mode. Ready indicates the cutter is in ready mode and is ready to accept cutting data from Cutting Master 3. Cutting indicates the cutter is cutting a job. Just below the cutter image is where you can choose the condition number for the cutting the current job. When the status is in ready mode, the cutters that are connected will each display four groups of settings, condition, advanced, and test cut. Clicking on an arrow for any group will display the settings therein, where they can then be configured and adjusted. Condition shows the current settings of the selected condition on the cutter. When clicking on one of the conditions above, Cutting Master 3 receives the condition settings for that condition from the cutter. Advanced will display advanced settings unrelated to the tool. Some of these settings are complex, but you can learn about them by referring to your FC8600 user's manual. Test Cut will perform a test cut. This allows you to test the condition after it has been adjusted. Cutting Master 3 allows control over the conditions on the cutter. Unless the job design, layers in the job design, or colors are each assigned to a condition or media type, Cutting Master 3 will use these settings here to cut the job. As you see here, most of the settings are standard, with the exception of two added settings of cut line pattern and passes. Cut line pattern determines the type of line to be cut, from solid to different types of dashed lines and passes, which determines how many passes each cut line will make. Using passes can be helpful when cutting harder or thicker materials, where more than one cut pass is needed with the cutting tool. Below the condition settings are the advanced settings. Most of these settings are complex, so it is best to review your FC4500 manual for explanations of each of these settings. Earlier, we discussed how each color or layer can be assigned to either a condition or media type. What we will do now is review how to set up media types within Cutting Master 3. 
To define media types, click on the File pull-down menu and select Define Conditions. This will open the side panel to two folders. The second folder contains media types. Click on it and it will reveal the different media types that came with Cutting Master 3. Recall there that media types are a group of settings that are contained within a condition. The only difference is that media types can be labeled and assigned names. To edit one of these media types, hover the mouse over the media type and a small edit link appears just to the right. Click on edit and the side panel displays all the settings for that media type. Notice that the settings are exactly what are included with a typical condition. From here we can start making changes such as blade type, offset, speed, acceleration, and force. There are advanced condition settings such as tangential emulation and even establishing the number of cut passes. Let's get back to the media type list by clicking on the All Conditions link and create a new media type. This is done by right-clicking on the list and a context menu appears. The third choice is Add Material. Click on it and a new entry is added with the label Material. Material is highlighted, meaning that we can rename it immediately. Let's enter Chipboard Thin. We have the new material or media type, so let's configure it for that type of media. Similar to earlier steps, hover the mouse above the media type and click on Edit. From previous tests, this will require the blade type of CB15U. The speed is a little too high, so let's reduce it to about 30. The acceleration we can increase to about 2, and the cut force we will set to around 35. The other settings we will keep the same. Now we can click on the All Conditions link to return us to the list. Keep in mind that a media type is not limited to configuring just a particular media, but it can also be configured for a type of cutting. For instance, let's create a media type for cutting smaller characters on outdoor vinyl. Once again, we can right-click on the list and select Add Material. We'll name it Intricate Cutting. The purpose would be to use this media type with settings for cutting intricate graphics and lettering. Now hover the mouse over the new media and click Edit. We can keep the blade type to the CB15UB. The speed will reduce to a slower speed of 20. Acceleration we will leave at 1. And the cut force we will set to 15. Let's go back to the media type list by clicking the All Conditions link. There will come a point when you've created a multitude of media types and would like to organize them into folders, such as you see here in the side panel. To create a folder, right-click on the list again, and this time, click on the second choice, Add Preset. A preset is just another word for folder. The idea is to organize your media types. You may want to organize them into preset folders by the manufacturer, type, or some other method. In this case, we will just name our preset My Media. Now we can start dragging our newly created media types into the My Media preset folder. We can go back to the Configure Cut Job options, and under Apply Conditions, we can assign the cut lines to our new media types. When we click on the contextual menu, under the condition column that are also organized by the preset folders. As you can see, Cutting Master 3 provides all the necessary functionality to cut your design directly from Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw. DCut Master is a very simple program that provides a very useful function. It imports DXF files from your CAD or graphic application. Then, Within DCut Master, you can display, delete, and sort objects of the DXF design, as well as save the data. What's nice, like Cutting Master 3, conditions can be set within the software 
so that I can automatically control the condition as it sends the design to the cutter. To open a DXF file into DCut Master, it first has to be a DXF file coming from AutoCAD Release 13. This is not hard to do since most graphics and CAD programs can export to this format. To open a DXF file, click on the File pull-down menu. Click Load DXF and choose a DXF file. Once the design is loaded, we can send the design to the plotter by clicking on the Output pull-down menu. And then click on Output to Plotter. In the Output window, most of the options here are fairly standard so that we can just click Output.